Hey. Um, hi. So uh, we're going to look at molar conversions. Okay, we're going to apply what we learned about moles and representative particles and moles and molar mass. We are going to apply that to molar conversions. Okay, um, so I'm going to write that down. Oh, I got I to gotta share my screen. Um, share screen. Share screen. Okay, let me go here. we go. All right. Um, remember what I said in class that um, this is not hard. You just learn one step at a time. Okay. So hopefully you watched moles, representative particles. Okay. Just some vocabulary and moles and molar mass. All right. You need to have a periodic table with you and you need to have a calculator with you. Okay. You need to have both of these right now. So pause and go get them if you do not. You need to be an active learner, not a passive learner. You need to go through the process yourself, okay? And you determine what to do. Okay. Molar conversions. Remember, we will utilize this for the rest of the school year, okay? Now, what did we say? We said the one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd rep representative particles, right? And in a chemistry class, representative particles will be atoms, ions, formula units, or molecules. Okay, we know that. We, you should have been introduced to that and you are allowed to ask questions about that, okay? We've also said that one mole is equal to the molar mass and that we get the molar mass from the periodic table, right? Okay, so what we have is a situation where we have a centerpiece, which is the mole, right? And we can relate moles to mass. And we, by saying that one mole, right, I'm just, is equal to the molar mass. And we could easily make that conversion. So we're going to use T charts again. The molar mass, once again, is found from the periodic table. We could also relate moles to particles because we know that, oops, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want that word to go right here, my bad. We can also relate moles to particles. And how do we know that we're using particles? Because we're going to see the word ions, atoms, formula units, or molecules, right? I've just said the same thing two times in two different ways. We know that one mole, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those. So the types of units you will be dealing with will either be, excuse me, particle units. These are the units behind numbers that tell you that you're dealing with particles. If you're dealing with particles, you're dealing with Avogadro's number. You've got to pay attention to your units, okay? If you are seeing units such as grams, or you are seeing the word mass, or kilograms, right? It can be kilograms. Then you will be utilizing the periodic table. Okay? Remember that when we make conversions, and what we're doing are molar conversions, we start with the number and the unit that we have, right? We set up a T chart, or we go like this. Now it's the same thing. You put the unit you have down here. You put the unit you need up here. 
right? We learned how to do this. Some of us did. Oops, I did that wrong. Unit you have goes on the bottom so that it will cancel. The unit you need goes on top, right? And then the numbers that you put in here are dependent upon the units that you are comparing, okay? So you have to come up with what those numbers will be by actually looking at the words and saying, okay, one to 12, right? There's in one foot, there's 12 inches or 12 inches in one foot or uh, one pound of 16 ounces or one gram or 35.45 grams is one mole, something like that. So we get the grams from here, okay? So let's go. Let's look at an example. We are going to go mass two moles, all right? What does that mean? That means you're given grams and you're asked for moles. Super simple, all right? So we're gonna highlight that. This is mass to moles, all right? Um, a, nope, let's go like this. How many moles? are in a 250 gram sample of water. Okay, how many moles are in a 250 gram sample of water? Wow, I wish that was straight. All right, so what we're asked for is moles, right? That's our question. What we're given is 250 gram sample of water, right? This is what I'm given. I'm always going to start with what I'm given. I have 250 grams, grams of what? Grams of H2O. I am going to convert my grams to moles, right? So this is a mass to moles problem. This is a one-step conversion, right? If you look up here, right now, get a different color, I have mass and I need moles. Well, I can get there in one step, okay? One-step process, mass to moles. Anytime moles is involved, it's usually just a step. I'm going to put grams of water on the bottom. I'm going to put moles of water on top. I am converting mass to moles, all right? Now, whenever I do that, I'm going to always put a one next to the mole. And now I need to know how many grams of water are in one mole of water. So what I need to do is I need to get the molar mass of water. So I'm going to go to my periodic table. You are out of the molar mass of water, plug it in, get your answer, come back and check. All right, I've got hydrogen two times 1.01. .01. That's gonna be 2.02. .02. I've got oxygen at one times 16. That's going to give me 18.02 grams per mole, such that one mole is 18.02 grams. I will divide 250, oops, excuse me, on 250 divided by 18.02 equals. And I have got, and I'm going to utilize my significant figure rules. I should have four in my answer. So I'm going to have 13.87. 13.87, if you leave it like that, that is not correct. Every answer gets a label, a unit. That is what moles of water. Beautiful. So we took our grams and converted our grams to moles by dividing by the molar mass. All right, let's do one more. Um, how, no, no. All right, this time let's go from, let's see, we just went from mass to moles. Let's go from moles to mass. All right, so what is the mass 
of 0 0.694 moles of um, calcium nitrate. Okay, so um, what I see is that the number is what I'm given, right? That's what I'm given. So I know that that's what I will start with. And then over here is what I am asked for, the mass of the calcium nitrate. So this is what I'm asked for, all right? I see that I am going from moles to mass, right? Moles to mass. This is one step, right? Go back up to your chart, right? Let's look at this time. We have moles and we need mass, right? Mass is going to be in grams. We're going to need our periodic table. It is one step. All right, let's go back down here. Let's, oh gosh, where'd all those papers come from? Let's start with what we're given, 0 0.694. You should pause, do your work, come back unless you have no idea what to do. I'm gonna start with what I'm given. And you know what? I've got to get the formula for calcium nitrate. Well, hopefully you realize that's calcium, that's nitrate, and that is calcium nitrate. We need to get the molar mass. So I'm going to pull out my periodic table. I'm going to go to my calcium and I have one. Calcium is 40.08. 40.08, nitrogen, I've got two, that's times 14.01, yep. Oxygen, I've got six, and that is times 16. All right, so put that in your calculator. All I do, guys, is I'm gonna go 40.08 um, plus parentheses, uh, two times 14.01, close parentheses plus parentheses, six times 16, close parentheses, equals, make sure it makes sense, 164.10. All right, okay. I know I need to do that because mass is involved. So I'm gonna have to calculate the molar mass. I'm going to start, once again, I'm going to start with what I'm given. This is what I'm given. 0 0.694 moles, moles of what? Calcium nitrate, okay? I'm going to put the unit I have on bottom. And I'm gonna put the unit I need in up top. I need mass, that is grams, grams of what? Grams of calcium nitrate, okay? One step, now every time I'm doing a molar conversion and I need a number of moles, I will put a one here because I'm going to get the mass of one mole. And we've already done that, it's over here. See our units, it says it's 164.1 grams for every one mole. So that is what I will put right here. All right, now you see that I will multiply across the top and then divide by one. So this number is actually going to get smaller. It won't quite cut in half though, right? We'll have about 70% of it. So 164.1 times, or let me not confuse you. I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply it by this number and then I'm going to divide it by one, which is not necessary. So 0.694 times 164.1 equals, and once again, I'm gonna let my original number lead my significant figures. I've got three, so in my answer, I will round to three, and that gives me, notice I will round, I will round appropriately. It looks like 114. Now, any answer without a label is wrong. 114 what? Fish? trees or grams of calcium nitrate.
Okay. All right. So the first conversion took us from mass to moles. We divided by the molar mass. You have to show your work. You must show your work or it is wrong, period. Okay. The second one, we converted our moles to grams. All right. The one always goes with the mole. That needs to get out of my way. And I need to add a piece of paper. Why can I not add? Oh, add. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, let me just get another piece of paper. This is unfortunate. Um, add, camera, document, scan, stickies. No, I just need another piece of paper. So let's add, there we go. Now, remember we've got moles here. We've got mass here. We've got particles here. Okay. Now, let's look at an example of moles to particles. Example. Um, how many particles and what type are in um, two point oh nine moles of mm, let's do carbon dioxide carbon dioxide okay so let's look at what's going on here we are given the number right go to that first that's what you're given right so we're going to start there we are asked for particles and we're asked for what type so we're going from moles to particles this is what we need right notice on your roadmap moles is here particles is here that is one step so this is moles to particles and it is one step okay so we're going to start with what we're given 2.09 moles of carbon dioxide, that is CO2. I'm going from moles to particles and what type? Well, this is covalent, so it would be a molecule, right? So I'm actually counting molecules of carbon dioxide. Now, whenever I go from moles to molecules, remember we've learned that one mole, I'm writing on my little road map up there, is equal to 6.02. So they did not mention the mass, right? We, we were not brought over here, so I don't need a mass. We're just dealing with moles and particles. So I don't need a mass here. And I will put one next to the mole and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is Avogadro's number, next to the particles. I see that my moles cancel. I'm going to multiply the numbers on top and divide it by the one, not a necessary step, 2.09 times 6.02, second EE, 23 equals, um, once again, I need three significant figures. So we'll round, that will equal 1.26 times 10 to the 24th. All answers should be labeled. That is molecules of CO2. All right, let's look at another example, okay? Um, probably the last one. Baby steps, baby steps. All right. How? Oh, sorry. Let me let me let me go say more here. Let's go particles to moles. Okay. How 
many moles in 9.30 times 10 to the 24th formula units of sodium chloride. So that's ionic. So I called the particles formula units. So you see what is given is the number, right? The number is always what's given. This is given. This is asked for. Right? So I'm going from particles to moles. If I look at my roadmap, I can go from particles to moles in one step by using Avogadro's number and one mole. All right, so this is one step. Start with what you have, 9.30 times 10 to the 24th formula units. Sometimes I tell my kids that they can write FUs. Put the unit that you have on the bottom. Put the unit that you need on the top. Put a one next to the mole. How many formula units are in a mole all day long? The same number. Now you see that we will take this value, we will multiply it by one, and then we will divide it by Avogadro's number. If you do not put that in your calculator correctly, you'll get the wrong answer. And you won't know that you're putting in the calculator correctly unless you try it. Don't be a passive learner. You should be doing this and pausing if, if you can. Oops, okay, hold on. 9.3 second EE 24 divided by 6.02 second EE 23 equals. Those exponents are gonna to going to pretty much cancel each other out. I need three significant figures in my answer. I will do 1.54 or how about 15.4? And that is moles, moles of what? Moles of sodium chloride, okay? So we have done four one-step conversions, all right? We had moles and we converted our moles to mass by saying that one mole is equal to the molar mass and we would see grams and we would know we need to use, find our numbers using the periodic table. We also went from mass to moles by using those same values and that was a one step. We then took our moles to particles and our particles to moles, which was also one step because we know that one mole is equal to this many particles. In order to know which values to use, you have to look at your units. They're either moles, grams, or a different version of mass, which can be converted to grams, or they are atoms, ions, formula units, and or molecules, okay? And those units tell you which numbers to use. Do I use Avogadro's? Do I use one? Do I go to the periodic table? Now, um, um, why, there you go. Uh, hopefully I'll assign some practice problems. We'll definitely talk about this, okay? See ya.